Hello guys and welcome back to another video with me Slivers FX and this Gothic 2 New Balance. Today we're going to the Halls of Irdorath. In the last videos we have already gathered our crew. Jorgen is our captain and once we gather ourselves into the captain's quarters the um, cutscene will start and uh, we are on our way to the Halls of Irdorath. I actually enjoyed this cutscene even though it's already over 20 years old. Um, it still gives me goosebumps, you know? It's beautiful. It's kind of funny that the emblem on the sails look like Gryffindor, sort of. It looks like a griffin. I'm not sure where they got uh, the design from though. I never checked on that. I probably should. Okay, so we are closing in on the Halls of Irdoreth. I'm gonna cancel the cinematic. Once we are here, Chapter 6 starts. There's gonna be quite a bunch of enemies outside. We do have plenty of arrows, so I'm not worried about that. And we're just gonna start killing everything and we're gonna do this speedway. Once you get into this cave complex, <clears throat> <clears throat> Might as well go here first. And then we're gonna also uh, try to save Pedro, who has been taken from the monastery by the Seekers. Okay. Let's go see him right now. I think he's in the first room. Stop blocking me, seriously. So much. He's not. Oh yeah, he is. Wait a minute. One. Wait a minute, traitor! I ought to just stop. You have the. Tell me what you. Yes. All right. Thank. And the easiest thing to do and getting more experience uh, is for him to follow you to your ship. Let me see if I have the uh, settings on for NPCs. NPC's companion sprint, so he goes faster. Yes, okay, cool. I don't want to leave him behind too far. <clears throat> Man, my throat today is awful. I don't know what's up with that. <clears throat> and I do apologize, but I hope it'll get better. Alright, here we are on the ship. Hey. And I'm talking to the wisp. <laughs> here we are. An impressive sh stop. Ah. What it is the order? Then you just go through the dialogue and he tells you how to open the uh, the rest. You can take your companions here with you if you so wish, but I just rather play alone because then they get lost and you have to keep tr backtracking all the time. And I don't really mind that. So to get through the next part, you have to click on that little torch and there's going to be a couple of seekers here that we want to get rid of before. And a couple of undead. Well, a lot of undead. And then the lizard men start. A lot of lizard men. There he is all the time. There he is. There he is. Isn't that funny? Every time you see a secret, there he is. <laughs> there's gonna be a couple of uh, lizard men also here in the back, but there's not gonna be any undead until we reach the dungeon area. And of course, the uh, the dragon. But you wanna get rid of the draconian first. And then you wanna talk to him, so the Eye of Enos triggers. Stop making the 
dragon is angry, but he doesn't stand a chance against us. <clears throat> An old letter from Arkal. I wonder what that is. Hmm. There's gonna be a couple of uh, chests here, a lot of gold, a lot of golden coins, a lot of uh, golden items, and potions. Make sure you grab everything. Actually, 3,000 gold in there almost, which is insane. But I guess dragons are richer than anyone else. Another 1,500 in there. Another 1,500 in there. And a lot of uh, arrows as well, which uh, I, ha I have plenty, so I don't mind. I made 14,000 before I got here. Okay, nice. And another 3,000 gold. And then this door opens automatically as soon as you beat the dragon. There's gonna be a seeker right there. And another one on the red si right side. And another one across. So you might as well just kill him. And a lot of undead. If they fall down, don't mind. It's not that big of a deal. Next, we need to click on those switches up there. And it only works with the bow or crossbow. Being that one already triggered. And you've done that, this thing starts moving towards you. So the moving bridge uh, gets across. You don't have to hit them precisely. I think they get hit even if you have 0% with, uh, with your ranged weapons. It's gonna be a go demonic go goblin skeleton, which is a first, and it's the only one of, uh, of its kind in the game. Uh, there's gonna be more uh, chests if you want to grab more loot up here. Let me just go check. Smaller chests, but still a lot of loot. And I think there's one more on the other uh, tower. Check real quick. Indeed, I was not mistaken. Another 500 gold. Those uh, instant uh, potions are quite useful, so if you need extra, just grab a few more here. And now the undead party starts. So most of these guys are going to be undead from here on out until we reach the... Um, and we, until we reach the dragon area. But yeah, I think most of them are going to be undead. And of course, we're going to also see Mario, who has been uh, converted by the Seekers to serve their master. Okay, nice. I think there's even... Uh, oh, there is another chest right here. So there's more loot. And now the uh, difficult part starts because there's going to be a lot of undead here that you want to get rid of fast. Otherwise, they will kill you because they do the, quite a bit of damage. You get quite a bit of uh, Inoskarma as well. And there's also another uh, undead boss right there. Which we're gonna kill, get rid of very quickly. There you go. I prefer using a bow because I don't have to deal with them blocking all the time. Here onto the right, there's gonna be a ooh, couple more undead, obviously. But I wanted to say that here onto the right, there's gonna be an alchemist bench, which you can use to recharge your Eye of Inos. And also a book and a recipe for a very specific. Um, hmm. For a very specific tonic elixir. It's called Embaria Firgasto. And it uses... It uses, I think, dragon eggs. Let's see, I think it's under permanent. Yes, it's under permanent. And it uses dragon eggs. So if you sold all of your dragon eggs to Bennett, then you won't have any. But if you want... Extra effects. It says a very rare and valuable potion, but the effect is unknown. It depends on, I believe, what class you are. So we're going to make three. We don't have more. 
and we're gonna drink them and see what happens. F1, you get 10 dexterity, 10 dexterity, 10 dexterity, nice. Well, last time when I was a mage, I got uh, 25 mana each time I drank one, so that was quite insane. I'm gonna drink these. Uh, have almost 8,000 HP at this point, which is nice. And also the Diary of a Dark Novice. Nothing else to be added except for this little chest here. Let's continue. The Halls of Irdorath updates. And now we can continue on our journey, killing the undead. Mm -mm. There are skeletal fighters. You don't even have to talk to Mario, by the way. You can just kill him. And it gives you 5000 HP. And there's gonna be another Shadow Lord, which you need to kill. The only thing that I miss from the Halls of Irdorath, even though you might think it's a bit obnoxious to, to miss it, is this area right here. So this used to be like a little puzzle where you had to go to each separate room, chamber, upstairs, downstairs, and then unlock all of these pillars in here. And now when you kill this lord, the door just opens. It's kind of boring, honestly. It's not gothic key anymore. We're just gonna kill all of these. They removed that, I think, last year in April. But I guess it is what it is. I'm gonna kill a lot of Dark Masters. Make sure you keep moving so you don't get all the damage in your face. Because there's quite a bit of them. Another converted paladin. And this guy is the one that um, deals the most damage. Sure, you can talk to him. I just avoid doing that. I just kill him directly. This, uh, there's a few things that he will tell you about how the, uh, the dragon that he guards here is the most powerful and everything. The undead dragon. Basically, uh, an incarnation of Belyar. But it's fine. We don't need him. Okay, I did forget to uh, to recharge the Eye of Enos, so we're going to do that before we set out. Create. I'm going to read this book stand. I'm going to read the other book stand. I have already 100 rhetoric, so I'm not... You cannot get more than 100 rhetoric. Sorry. I've been keeping saying this wrong. Rhetoric. It's rhetoric. That's how you pronounce that word. And I've just noticed it because of the uh, US election, because they keep repeating that word over and over again. Another book stand right here. Get more intelligence, which I don't really need because I'm not a mage, but I will have almost 300 with, without any other bonuses. I never created any runes. Come on, die. Thank you. And we're gonna have this chest here that we can unlock by, I think. Oh yeah, we have to gather the stuff in here. He has the key. And you can get uh, also uh, quite a few nice things in here. Okay, nice. Let's see if there's anything else. I think the other side, we already been there. There's nothing in here. Okay, cool. Let's see what's the note. So we have an almanac of obsession. We don't want to read that. Note from the Dark Mage says how you enter this door. The Eye of Power illuminates your path. And I don't think there's anything else. And this is the Eye of Power. Okay. We're going to click on the door. And automatically everything just opens. And instead of getting to the dragon directly here, like behind this wall... Something else happens instead. You go to another area entirely. Which I don't mind, but maybe that was overdone. They could have just left the dragon where it was. So there's going to be a lot of 
spiritual guardians in here that you might have to kill. Sorry, sanctuary guardians, not spiritual. The main thing is to know where to go. And I think I already missed it. Yeah. It's here ish. There'll be a couple of more here. And they do quite a bit of damage if you don't have enough armor. So beware. This hit harder than most undead. And there's gonna be quite a few of them. They do give uh, excellent XP, 750 each time you kill one. Okay, we're almost there. So they did almost 500 damage each time they hit me with their sword. Let's see what else. No, we're not going down there. Uh, let's see. I, I sometimes get lost in here, but it's not that I get lost. It's more like that I don't know where to go specifically. I think we have to go down. Yeah, if if you don't know where to go, just look for more Sanctuary Guardians. Eventually, you'll find your way. He almost killed himself. If you want you to um, min-max your XP, try to kill every one of them. Before they kill themselves down in the lava. That's the last one. Let's go to this area here. I think this is a specific area for worshipping. Check. Yep. It is. There's a little altar there. It doesn't specifically do anything. I don't think so. You can interact with it. But I don't know what it does. I think it summons one of the mini bosses in the middle. But I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it does. Okay. I don't think you have to do this, though. You can just skip it and go directly to the dragon. Which is, I believe, this way. Let's keep going. And yes, this is the dragon area. You can already see him in the distance. We're gonna give it a quick save, and we're gonna go talk to him and see what he has to say. Now on, on easy mode, this guy has already 50,000 HP. On normal, it's gonna be 100,000. And on the hardest difficulty, it's gonna be 200,000 HP. So, it's gonna take you a while to kill him. I am just gonna range him because as I said, it's the easiest thing to do. Plus, I can avoid all of his attacks just by moving sideways. If I stretch my bolt entirely, I think I do, yeah, four and a half thousand damage each time I hit an arrow. And if I would switch to um, holy arrows, that would probably do even more damage. Actually, let me check that. Okay, so shift one, shift seven, shift three. Yeah, I have 27 holy arrows. Let's try. How much damage will that do? Almost 6,000. Not too bad. So it is worth it to have some holy arrows for this guy if you're struggling. And it's gonna make him die faster. Alright, cool. Cutscene is the same as in uh, the original Gothic. Tsardas appears, he takes his power, and then he disappears entirely again. get 30,000 HP, a lot of Innos Karma. Make sure you grab everything from the dragon. And then you just have to go back to the ship. Once you leave the dragon's lair and you re return to the main hall of Erdorath, Dagoth will appear in the center with four different demons. And he will start talking to you about um, how their plan was, how uh, everything was supposed to go, how they used you, and so on and so forth. And now that you're expendable, he will try to kill you. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of dialogue here that I'm going to skip, but all in all, in the end, you just have to get rid of all the demons, because Dagoth himself will disappear. Sometimes this bugs out, so make sure 
you save before getting here because uh, I have encountered a lot of ways that this just didn't work and I couldn't progress with my story and the door here where you get out was still locked all of your companions will now be on different stages of the of this map and you can tell them that uh, everybody can return to the ship now just make sure you do that I think the next one is Milton right outside the uh, these halls, indeed. Guy, mate. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Okay, Milton's going back. I think next one is Lester. That is on the bridge. My headaches. I can. Then we have Angar. Yep. Yep. Whoop. Wait a minute. At the end of this cave will be uh, Lee. And Gorn will be uh, with the ship. Wait a minute. I don't even know why Lee is here, honestly. His only goal was to actually get back to Murtana and get the revenge on the king, which happens in Gothic 3. Okay, a couple of more orcs. Nothing too big, nothing too fancy. Let get sure you get rid of all of them. Buddy, this island There's is even a couple of on the ship. Me, you want... oh, uh... And Diego is actually waiting already here. Laris, everybody's here. And I think we now need to talk to the captain. To keep moving. I don't even know where he is though. Maybe he's still sleeping. We'll check in a second. Huh, bizarre. Let's check upstairs. He has to be somewhere. So Vatras is here, uh huh. And Jorgen is sleeping. The okay. enemy is dead. Uh, so, at this point, you can end the game, which means you're sailing to the mainland, the Martana, or we can go to chapter 7. And we're gonna do that since this is the mod and we need to finish it. I'm ready. Great! Uh... Okay. Once you do that, he tells you to go back to, to the captain's quarters. And uh, as in the original, the, uh, the cutscene will start. And you are on your way onto an island that has not been uncover uncovered before. And the human slew the beast, and it entered into Belyar's realm. Zardas, what exactly happened in the Temple of Irdarath? With the help of Inos, you have defeated the Avatar of Evil. And I have taken its power unto myself. Since I left the Circle of Fire, this alone has been my goal. We're overloaded. We have to toss some of the gold overboard. Get your hands off the gold. Listen, it would be really better if we... I don't want to hear any more about it. I've heard the war with the orcs is going badly. And? We probably won't be able to spend all the gold anywhere. The gold stays on board. What good is the gold if we capsize in the tiniest storm? And then this new cutscene appears that is not part of the original game. I'm not even sure where they got it from, but eventually uh, the storm catches you and you end up on an island or near an island. And this is where chapter 7 begins and we are going to save this for another video. If you like the video guys, please subscribe for more future content and as always, thanks for watching.